Hi everyone. So today is going to be a little bit different. Um, so many of you have been asking for um, what I eat in a day type of videos. And uh, I haven't done much of it because it's not always easy capturing um, an entire day of eating. But I thought one meal at a time would be kind of doable. So I'm going to be doing a series of um, sort of one meal vlog if that makes sense. Basically just take the camera with me um, and uh, as I prepare my own meal. Hopefully it's relaxing to watch. It's going to be very little editing, so you're warned. And just to show you how I prepare my meals normally and um, how a keto vegan eats, basically. So today I, I thought I would like some pizza. So I haven't made pizza for quite a while, so I'm kind of craving for it. Actually, yesterday when I was out, I got some um, sort of pizza cheese, vegan pizza cheese. I haven't made pizza for a long time, so I'm really looking forward to it. So the different bread rolls on my channel that you can find, uh, you can use as a pizza base. But today I'm going to use the crusty bun. So the, you can use the flat bread, you can use the vital wheat gluten bread, you can use the um, crusty bun. So the crusty bun is more bready. Uh, which I kind of fancy at the moment. Um, the flatbread, it will come out a bit more crispy. So I'm going to just take you through how I normally do it. So at home, I normally use a mixer to do my kneading. I mean, it's extremely convenient and quick to do. Obviously, you can do everything by hand, but you know, I'm a slave for easy life. So here's my almond flour, um, a big bag. So this is ground almonds, not extra fine flour or anything like that. So let me measure. So I need 120 grams of ground almonds. Okay, around that much. So this will make me about three pizzas. And obviously it depends on how big you want your pizza. So that goes in my mixing bowl. And then my psyllium husk. So I switched to this brand recently because I couldn't find the really fine powder one I used to use a lot for the flatbreads. But this one's pretty good. You probably have seen this one featured on my recent recipes. This is more like breadcrumbs. So, so I need about, reset. So I need about 40 grams of psyllium husk. Oh, that's a bit too much. 40 grams, perfect. And by the way, I, I have to refer to my own recipes because I don't always remember the, the quantity. And there's a really good app called um, uh, Paprika that I've been using for quite a few years. Um, I just log all my recipes and whatever recipes I collect and you can you know, multiply the quantity and everything. I mean, it's just a really good app. So I use it to track my experiments and everything. So. Um, so here's my keto crusty buns. Okay, so that's my psyllium husk goes in. And then I also added in one teaspoon of uh, instant yeast. Okay, so here's my trusty mixer. I really work it hard. I use it for, for everything really. So here's my bowl. I mean, it's sometimes really nice to mix things with hands, but we mix it so much quicker. So ordinarily, if you make regular bread, this would be the attachment for bread kneading. But for our keto bread, I'm using this one. So it's more of a, a blending tool, but it's perfect for keto bread. So I'm gonna hook it on and just give the dry ingredients a quick mix, like a good girl. Okay, it doesn't take long. That's all we need. I'm going to make a little well in the middle and add in my oil, so just one tablespoon. Like that. And then here comes liquid. So it's kind of good I'm able to have an opportunity to show it to you again. Because some of you are having trouble with the um, to getting the dough to get to the right consistency. So some of you actually have the bread kind of puff up 
and then um, sink right down. And the texture in the middle is kind of a gooey um, instead of being bread-like. Most of the times I say it's down to kneading and the water. So the amount of liquid you need. It will come with experience. It's baking just one of these things that, I mean, it, it's great if it works the first time, but if it doesn't, give it a couple of tries. Um, you, you will get it. And once you get it, you get it. Okay. So let me just show you how, how I do it. I mean, it, it can be a bit tricky because, you know, I always say be safe when you come to, when, when it comes to adding liquid. It's important not to add too much, but if you're not adding enough, it can be kind of make or break. So I'm going to pour a little bit of water to start with and then get the mixer going. So slow speed, I'm going to just let the whole thing kind of um, mix together roughly. So in the beginning it would be quite um, kind of crumbly, so you can see that. And then gradually I'm going to just add in really small amount at a time. We're talking like a couple of teaspoons at a time. Because then, you know, it's l less likely you're going to uh, add too much. And just a little bit at a time. Okay, so, you know, the, the two cups of liquid, you most likely don't need it. And most of the times I probably use about a cup and a half. Um, but it really depends on, you know, sometimes the temperature of your room, of your kitchen, and the type of flour you use. So it's not absolute. Just because last time you used a cup and a half doesn't mean you need this, the same quantity at a time. So you really need to work with the dough and observe what happens to it. And you can see now gradually, it's kind of binding together. And this is when you want to really be quite careful about it. Let me just turn this off for now. So, and at the moment it's still quite crumbly, but it's kind of binding together. I mean, kneading is really important, but you can see it's still quite firm and it's, it cracks, you know, when you kind of break it apart very easily. So it needs a lot more kneading. So I've been asked, how long do you need to knead? There isn't a time <laughs> necessarily. Um, you knead until it reaches the right, consist uh, right softness. So I'm going to just turn it on a little bit and continue to add some more. Tiny bit at a time. So you need to be patient. I'm going to speed up a little bit. So apology for the noise. Let's have a look. Hmm. And also some of you have been reporting sort of purple bread. Um, to be honest, it's a bit of a mystery for me because I haven't, I've probably used about three to four different brands of psyllium husk powder. I haven't come across one that turns my bread purple. So there must be certain types out there or brands out there that does that or make your bread puff up. Um, the best recommendation I have is to um, try different brand um, until you get to the right one. Right, it still needs a bit more water. So I'm going to just, uh, just let the machine do its work for a little bit more. Okay. So when you bake your bread, if it comes out gooey in the middle, it probably means you put too much water in it. But if it's rock hard, that means you haven't added enough liquid. So that's generally my diagnosis, I think. Because I've gone through all trial and error when I experimented with this bread. I've gone through all scenarios. So, but you, you eventually get it right, like I did. So. So let's do a crack test. I'm going to do a crack test here. So the dough should be nice and smooth and warm in your hands. And see, there should be no crack when you try to press it and stuff like that. So it's kind of an easy test. It should be quite moist and soft, almost like normal bread dough. 
like that. So that's perfect. Okay, I'm gonna leave it to rest and prepare my pizza ingredients. And look at my water, I still have about half a cup. So it's one cup and a half today. Okay, with the toppings, I'm gonna to keep it very simple. I'm going to have some red onions and some tomatoes and one extra ingredients. <laughs> I'll show you in a bit. I love onions, but I particularly love red onions in my salad. No, it's not very sociable having raw onions, but I absolutely love red onions in my salad. I'm going to just slice it. Oh, I'm getting a bit teary already. This is so fresh. So that's my onion. And then some of the cherry tomatoes. And just roughly slice in half. Just easier to bake. So, whoops, the knife needs a bit sharpening a bit. Let me switch. Okay, let me switch to this one. So this knife is a lot better. Oh, so much better. Um, I like to use some beef tomatoes on pizza as well. It looks really nice. But cherry tomato is really sweet. And then I'm going to add one more ingredient that's slightly controversial uh, when, when it comes to pizza toppings, and that's um, avocado. I mean, you really should try it. Warm avocado is so good. And avocado on pizza, kind of just creamy and lovely and just wonderful to eat. So I probably only need half of the avocado. So, so you want to use ones that's quite ripe. So it's a great way to use a really ripe avocado. This one is kind of, uh, it's not overly ripe. I'm just cutting cubes quite roughly. Okay, so that's my pizza toppings ready. And avocado as well. Just looking at the color makes you happy. Okay, so the dough has been resting for about for 15 minutes, so it's ready. So I'm going to di divide it in three, so you can see this is nice and warm here. Um, I'm going to divide it in three, and then uh, use one today, and then two I'm going to freeze. So I like them equal portions, so I'm going to use the scale to divide in three. Okay, so it's about five, four, eight. So I'm going to measure out about 180 grams per pizza base. I'm not normally that accurate about things <laughs> in general. If you see my videos, you know, but I like things to be equal portion as much as possible. 182, a bit more. 182, and then the other one. Oh, perfect, 183. Great. So I'm gonna roll out the two I'm going to freeze so this is a piece of parchment, uh, baking sheets. I'm gonna just grab one of my dough balls, and give it a little squeeze, and just roll into a ball. I'm going to drizzle just a bit of oil here. Just so it wouldn't stick too much. I'm going to just spread it out with my hands. And roughly into a pizza shape. So you don't want it too thick because this dough is kind of quite bready. It will puff up slightly. So it will rise quite slight, uh, slightly when you bake. So it's quite therapeutic doing it. So it doesn't matter if the edges kind of break up, it's kind of normal. It's part of the charm. You can patch it up a little bit. You want to be perfect, want to be. So I'm doing it directly on the baking sheet. So I'm going to freeze it like this. 
and this would kind of separate it from the other pizza base. Okay, I'm going to do another one and then I'm going to stack it on top of each other. Okay, I just switched to the camera stand. I just thought you can see better like this. Okay, so I'm going to make a second one with a bit of olive oil. So the good thing about using parchment paper as separator for your base when you um, freeze is that when you take it out and defrost a little bit, you can just um, um, put it directly on your baking tray. So I'm going to just spread this out roughly into a pizza shape. You kind of just spread, press from the middle outwards. Should come out reasonably round. Okay, so pizza base number two. So what I'm going to do is just stack the last one on top of this one. And then I'm going to put both of them into a freeze bag and then just freeze them like this till I'm ready to use them next time. Okay, something like that. Okay, just throw them up and then zip it up. And then they're ready to be used anytime. And for my lunch, I'm going to roll out the third one directly on my baking tray. Some oil. You see, I'm cooking for myself, but I still go into the tutorial mode of talking through everything. So maybe I should just do it and talk less. What do you think? Okay, just roll it out slightly and then just pop in the middle and spread out. So this dough is just so fantastic. You really, I mean, personally, I really can't tell the difference between this dough and normal pizza dough. It's that close. Okay, just tidy up the edges slightly. I mean, one third of the recipe is kind of perfect for pizza for one person. I think. And then just kind of press it around. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. You don't want it too thick, it'd be too doughy. So um, I'm going to put some tomato sauce I make myself. So basically, this is so easy. Just chop some tomatoes, and I always have plenty of tomatoes in my fridge, and just throw a whole bunch of tomatoes on the frying pan with a bit of olive oil, and throwing some garlic, chopped garlic, and then um, just cook it down and then blitz it with a blender or what I've got is a handheld blender so it's quite handy, you just do it straight in the frying pan and then leave it to cool and you get this thick and creamy tomato sauce it's so easy and some salt to season obviously and then I'm gonna just scoop and spread a nice layer of tomato sauce and the great thing about making tomatoes yourself is is chunkiness. You can keep it so chunky. That's what you don't get if you buy from the store. And to be honest, why would you? Because it's so easy to make. I always put too much because I love it so much. It might make it slightly soggy, but it's going to be nice and gooey in the middle. So it's, it's perfect for me anyway. Okay, that's my tomato sauce. And then here comes the toppings. So I'm going to just, um, I think, tomatoes first. Just some of the cherry tomatoes, just quite liberally. I love tomatoes. I can just eat them all day. So we spread out nicely. 
There's plenty of um, toppings actually. And then a little sprinkle of my controversial avocado. You must try this, it's just so nice. And it, they just, you know, the avocado is just turned into this kind of creamy and gooey bits in there. If you don't tell anybody, they would probably wouldn't know there's avocado in there. Or maybe you would, because you, you would bite into chunks of it. And then this lovely red onion that made me cry earlier on. I'm going to put quite a lot on top, actually, because it will cook down and I really want plenty of onion. I mean, it's so quick. You don't need any complicated or fancy toppings. Just simple, simple veggies you already have in your fridge, you know, like mushrooms or anything. I'm going to sprinkle a bit of salt on top. Just make sure it's properly seasoned because it's got tomatoes and avocado as well. So sprinkle the salt. But last but not least, I'm going to put some vegan cheese. I mean, to be honest, I don't buy vegan cheese much. Um, if I want vegan cheese, um, keto cheese, I make my own. I've got a couple of recipes and I'll put a link underneath. But when it comes to pizza, I kind of want the kind of pizza cheese like thing. So just a little sprinkle. I don't use huge amount. And I felt that vegan cheese like this, you know, yes, you could say it's probably more processed than uh, straight plant food, but it's for the occasion, you know, for my pizza to look kind of pizza-like. I, I like that. For me, it's worth it. So the carb count for this cheese, this particular is from Violife. For 100 grams, it's about 21 grams of carbs. But the whole bag, really, it's only 150, and I'm using a small handful. So it's not too bad. I can live with that. And by the way, you can, you can pre-bake this if you want to. I didn't do that. I'm going to just bake straight away. If you take those out of freezer, it's probably to defrost them a little bit and then pop them in the oven for about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, pre-bake them before you put on topping. For fresh though, I'm going to go without pre-baking. I'm going to just pour a little bit of um, olive oil on top. Just make it luxurious. This is why I put in um, a 200 to 220 degree preheat oven. Just bake them till the top is nice and golden brown. Oh well, there you go. Beautiful, look at that. My goodness, it smells so good, so good. Let me just transfer it to my chopping board. Oh, perfectly baked. And the colour is just so beautiful. So wonderful. My oven is still going, so apologies for the noise. And uh, I'm going to just put some black pepper on top. Oh, I'm so hungry. And I'm going to drizzle some of my favourite olive oil. And just a few drops. And I'm going to slice it up. The base is crusty, which is really nice. So you can feel the crunch when you cut into it. Mm, I'm going to slice it one more time. Dividing each piece into half. And the last one. Wonderful. Would you like a piece as well? Shall I save one for you? Which one do you want? I think that piece looks divine. It's so creamy. And the avocado is literally just melting away. And to go with this pizza, I've got some green salad. I'm going to have on the side. This is just the mixed leaves with uh, some um, almond flakes on top and with vinaigrette dressing. So this will be my lunch. So I'm going to go enjoy this pizza and my green salad and uh, I'll see you soon.